Hello and welcome to a brand new video. I'm Dion. Today I'm joined by Nick and Jane to talk about the latest transfer rum rumours related to Palace. As always, if you do enjoy the video, leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. So let's get into it, gents. So the first rumour of the day is, according to Don Fifield, Scott Dan has signed a contract extension till the summer of 2021. Um, but apparently this was done a while ago, but it was kept quiet. So let's get straight into it. I mean... Scott Dan and uh, Stephen Henderson were the only players out of contract this summer, but it seems like it's only Stephen Henderson now. What's your thoughts, uh, Nick, on the decision from the club to extend his contract? Well, I, until we recently sort of made some appearances covering for injuries, I kind of thought he was out of it and I thought he'd be off to a championship side or somewhere. But, but seeing his performances, I'm actually quite pleased that he is staying. Um, do you remember four or five years ago, there was always talk of him going to Everton because he's a, he supports the Toffees, doesn't he? So I, I think it's a good bit of business, but it, it was weird that it was kept on the hush-hush. Maybe they didn't tell him until after he'd made his appearances so he'd put, play well and um, earn that year, year extension. Yeah, um, the thing about it that people are really questioning at most. It's not really his performance, but his age side of things, James. Um, he's turning 34 next year. Um, and we've already got age and squad and we've been talking about it for so long and how we have to reduce the age of the squad. Do you think that's a worry for you? Yeah, it's a long-term worry. Um, I think short-term, Scott Dan's still a quality player. Um, definitely a, a, a squad player for sure. Um, I'm really happy about it because, as Nick said, you know, he hasn't played on a regular basis but when he steps in he, he looks the business and he keeps himself fit and you know again I've said this before the likes of Gary Cahill you know this they're, they're getting on 34 but as a defender as a, as a centre back you, you tend to get away with it with age so um, you tend to you know um, stay a bit longer um, before you need to retire so I think it's it's clear that you know you just give an extension for one season at a time but it, it buys, it, what it does, it just bides us a bit of time. Um, but clearly, you know, as a club, we need to start looking at youth. And uh, um, at the moment, it's, it's, it's impossible to do anything, unfortunately. But um, yeah, it, gives, it, it retains a very, very good player. And, and overall, I'm, I'm very happy with it. Yeah, well, the thing is, with the older squad, it's just occurred to me, you, you do develop more football intelligence the more you play and the older you get. Even I did, you know, and I, would, I, I got a lot. I wasn't as quick, but I was I was a better player, if you know what I mean, just because I was a bit more wily. Um, so that experience can be a good thing. I, the, the only thing with the ageing thing is you haven't got that youngster who kind of breaks all conventions and, and does his own thing and, and can be a match winner because of it. Yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing that you have to consider is his performance on a pitch. And before the coronavirus pandemic, I think James mentioned that Gary Cahill... Him and Gary Cahill had a solid partnership in terms of when we faced Watford, when we faced um, Newcastle and Brighton. We kept clean sheets in three matches in a row with not only just clean sheets from the whole back line, but Scott Dan was one of the most vital players in there. And I feel like that is an important factor to consider out of this. And I mean, when you look at the pecking orders, um, where does Scott Dan rank for you, Nick? Um, has your pecking order changed in terms of centre-backs available? First, it was Sacco and Tompkins people talking about. But well, Scott Dan came in, he performed well. So how does this change your view of Scott Dan in the back line? Yeah, it's, it's, it's good to have him there as a backup. Plus, he's always handy for getting goals from corners. You know, he, he, he's always scored a few each season. So there's that if you need it late on in the second half to, to get the players up there. Um, it's, you, you're talking about is trying to get the best combo of the defenders. Interestingly, I had two supposedly best, Sacco and Cahill, I don't think they played that well together. It was weird, wasn't it? Yeah. And um, um, looking at the um, all-time eleven that um, the back of the Nest preview showed it, it was very surprising to see the defensive line up there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. Do you do you agree with um, James? Do you agree yeah. with Nick there, James? Yeah, I, I think that it's going to take something special to uh, nudge Gary Cahill out of the team. <laughs> um, so it's literally Gary Cahill plus one, um, as far as I'm concerned. Um, as long as Gary Cahill's fit, um, he, he starts. And we're always going to have, you know, unfortunately, the likes of Scott Dan, 
um, Sacco uh, and even Tompkins are getting a little bit injury prone. Um, and we just have to realise that we need this rotational four. But I, I really believe these are four very, very good Premier League defenders. And I think if there's one bit, one part of our team that is strong, I think that is it. I think we've got some really good players in that position and good cover. Um, so, um, yeah, it's something to look at the future. They will have to start looking at new players. Um, but as a cent as centre backs go, I, I think you know I, have, I haven't even mentioned Kelly. You know he had a great run of games. Exactly. Uh, we haven't even mentioned Kelly. But to be honest with you, at the beginning of the season, everyone was raving about Kelly because he really was doing the business. And then unfortunately, he got knocked. So you know we've got some very very good players at centre back, and um, yeah, we we shouldn't be too worried about that that uh, going forwards. Apart from the age, do you, do you think the um... The competition for places is is a real positive there because we haven't really got that as anywhere else on the pitch because Roy's got his favourites anyway. It's, it's you know look at um, Gyro who could have easily been a part of the back four once he'd stepped in for PVA. Um, you know for for somebody of that quality and to be player of the month not to be able to get into the back four it's it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I think um, we we are sort of um, in abundance at centre back, um, but uh, you know it, it's the full back positions that that we probably need to uh, increase cover for. But um, but yeah, centre back um, we we are we are um, blessed with <laughs> uh, um, a lot of players that can do a decent job. Yeah, and I think with the back line, it's a weird thing because normally on paper, you look at Gary Cahill and Sacco being the best defenders, surely they should play. But oddly enough, I don't know about you guys, but Gary Cahill and Sacco, I saw them as the most vulnerable when they played together. And it seemed like Sacco works well with Tompkins, but they don't work well with Cahill. K and Cahill works well with Scott Dan. So it's a, it's a bit of a weird one. It's not, it's not as simple as... If you're centre back, if you're the best centre back, um, you should play together because it hasn't worked in Palace's view of view of things. When when we have tried them, I mean, with Saka, I know Saka and Gayhill they haven't got the massive um, games together, but I remember Tottenham away, Saka looked way off the pace, and it seemed like both Alphas and Saka and Cahill they can't do it together on the pitch. Yeah, the only the only one that's performed who, that performs whoever he's playing with is Tompkins. He doesn't. He's he's the one that doesn't seem bothered, and and to drop Tomkins seems unfair. But when you've got a player of the class of Sacco, who is head and shoulders above a lot of defenders in the Premier League and, and across Europe as well, with his skill, his vision, and his damn cheekiness and entertainment value, it, it it's tough, isn't it? Yeah, and so let's uh, before we move on to the next player, um, let us know what you think. Are you happy with the decision of? Um, Scott Dan's contract getting extended. Um, but yeah, le le leave a comment down below. And the next player that I want to talk about is Yannick Balassi. Um, hey. Reports are suggesting that Everton are willing to sell Balassi at a huge loss for a round fee of only £3 million. Since he's left Palace, he's only played 29 games for Everton went out and went out on loan to Villa, Anderlecht and Sport in Lisbon. So Nick, <laughs> I heard you say yay there. Would you be happy if we took back Balassi for around £3 million fee? Three million is chicken feed, isn't it? Really, in today's money. Although with with clubs strugg maybe struggling as they are, maybe maybe we can get it down even further. Look, I'd I'd love Belassi to come back and be as good as he was, but after that injury, um, I don't think he was the same player. And actually, we we mugged Everton off to get thirty five mil for him. <laughs> it's, it sort of paved the way to towards where we are now because the money went into other players. It's you know. Would we have got Sacco if we hadn't been able to offload Balassi for such an obscenely ridiculous amount of cash? Because there was no way he was worth that much. But yeah, I'd, I'd like to see him back just just because it's, I don't know, it's very difficult with players coming back. And the ones recently that did well were Derry, wasn't it? And um, trying to think of others. But Andy Johnson, he came back and it almost killed what you liked about Andy Johnson because you saw him at the end of his career and it just didn't seem the same did it 
So James, are you nervous about having old players coming back to the club? Um, I mean, the thing with Balassi, I, I see it only working as him being a role player. I'm not too sure about you guys. I don't see him being a starter. And the reason why it may work is because when you look at our options out wide, who do we really have? I mean, there's Jeffrey Schlupp there, Wilfred Zaha, Andros Townsend. But if one of them gets injured, you can see there's a lack of depth. And maybe, of course, I haven't seen Bulassi play as much due to the fact that he's gone out on loan to various different countries, so it's not easy watching him. But if he's still got a bit of flair in him, I mean, he could be decent for us. Yeah, I mean, you know, my memories of Yannick Balassi are him, you know, um, flying down the wing and, and taking on players with a lot of skill and a lot of pace. Um, he never really had the finished article. He, was, he, he wasn't he um, was one for scoring goals. And that was why I think, um, you know, we got a really good price for him. Um, all what I worry about is, you know, he's coming back to us. If he does come back, he's going to be at the end of his career he's at age 30 and is he you know he's come back from that horrendous injury uh the one that everyone uh, you know worries about the cruciate ligament injury which 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 is what glenn murray had um the problem is is that whereas a glenn murray is is able to get away with not having that pace because he can be the focal point of the center forward holding the ball up with yannick balassi you know he's not that type of player he's a wing player he needs pace and that's what we remember. And and I'm thinking, do you know what? If he isn't, if he hasn't got that pace anymore, he's not going to be able to go past players, and he's not going to have the skill or, or or quickness to do it. So, uh, at best, I think he would be um, a squad player. Um, but yeah, he was a good player, and three million is cheap. It's cheap as chips these days. So it would depend on the wages um, mm. and who else was available. It's, it's a tough one to say yes or no on. I'd have to, I'd have to sort of, it'd be like if I was in maybe Roy Hodgson's situation, I'd have to compare it to what, who else is available and what, what other possibilities have we got. Um, he wouldn't be first choice, let's put it that way, but it's someone that I would potentially consider having back, yeah. Yeah, I think, it, as you said, it's various factors. I think wages are an important thing. I mean, three, three million pound fee is fair enough. That's that's basically nothing in, for Premier League clubs like us. But there's another factor to consider how much is it going to be on, how long is his contract going to be? Because, of course, when he went to Everton, it seemed like he got a wage bonus, um, wage increase from that. So you would have to probably take a wage cut. And would there be interest from elsewhere? I mean, other clubs can simply afford £3 million fee and maybe afford his wages. So I think it might be difficult in terms of actually, not the fee itself, but the wages to offer Balassi. But as always, let us know what you think. Um, leave down your comments. We do want Balassi back at the club. Is there unfinished business that you want to see? Um, and that's it for the transfer talk today. Uh, as always, if you have enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe and up the palace.